what's up you guys welcome back to my channel today i want to be making albondigas but they're going to be vegan so i am not vegetarian or vegan but i don't like working with raw actual meat so i heard of this meat called beyond beyond meat so they have beyond beef beyond like patties beyond whatever you know like just crumbles and stuff like that so i saw that they have like an actual like chunk of beef meat and what you do is you can basically cook it however you want and i've been craving albondigas so i was like why not let's give it a try i saw a couple of videos on tiktok showing you how to make it and i was a little skeptical because i was like okay it's vegan but i know it has egg like how are you supposed to substitute the egg so i also found an egg replacer hopefully i am able to do it so you're basically learning with me and i'm learning with you guys so we're just gonna try it out and i'll walk you guys through um so if you guys don't know what albondigas are it's just basically meatballs and then it's like in like a caldo like so it's like a soup full of vegetables and then it has meatballs in it um and on your soup you can basically put whatever you want um and i have mine prepared already so i'm going to be showing you guys that as well um but yeah so let's get started all right so here we have the beyond meat the one i was talking about um and it's plant-based ground so um, it literally looks like beef, like meat, like an actual meat, right? So we're going to need that. And then I have all my vegetables prepared here. So you're going to need onion and like tomatoes, which are down here. Um, I'm going to put carrot, zucchini, cilantro, uh, potatoes, and garlic as my vegetable choices i forgot the corn so that's okay if you guys want to add it to yours you guys can go ahead and do that so here are my vegetables all prepped and then this is the egg replacer that i was talking about and this is just a simply truth organic brand i've used their brand before and it's pretty good but i've never like use an egg replacer so this is my first time using it the instructions are pretty straightforward so it's just adding like some of this powder in here and then you add water and i'm assuming that it has the same consistency as an egg i have all of my other powder condiments here that i might be needing so i have onion powder uh ground black pepper ground cumin and garlic salt all right and i almost forgot you're also going to need some rice i'm using the jasmine rice and it has to be raw so obviously as i walk you through making the albondigas i'll show you how much of it you're going to need so while preparing your albondigas it really just matters what you want to add to it a lot of people just add um onion and then add a bunch of like seasonings on it but other people like to put like tomato onions potatoes um i called my mom and she told me to put potatoes in it um but i don't know if i want to do that so i think i'm just gonna go with whatever i feel i want to season my albondigas with um so i think i am gonna put tomatoes and onion and then a couple of seasonings on it and yeah we'll just go along with it and see where it takes us jora 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 poquito all right so here's the scary part for me because we're gonna move on to the egg replacer. So the instructions say to combine one teaspoon of Simple Truth organic egg replacer with two teaspoons of water and mix well. So two tablespoons. You guys, I read this wrong. It says tablespoon and I'm using a teaspoon. So there is my tablespoon. One, two, three. 
I don't think you guys could see it. This is what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that and then I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like. I was hoping for it to look a little bit more gooier, like kind of like the white of the egg, but it doesn't. Um, and I'm pretty sure I did it right. Um, so I did one tablespoon of the powder thingy and then two tablespoons of water. I'll show you guys what it looks like. It literally looks like this. This is what it looks like. Come on. That's what it looks like. So, honestly, ugh. Okay. I guess that's what veganizers have to do. I kid you not, it smells like, well, I mean, I've had a lot of Beyond Burgers, and that's what it smells like. It smells really good. So th this is what it looks like. Um, so I'm not gonna be using, I'm not gonna be using all of it because this is my first time doing this and I honestly don't wanna waste it all. So I think I'm going to be using like half of it, a little bit less than half. And I'm just going to dump it into my container where I'm gonna mix everything up. And I'm going to go ahead and save the other half. I just turned on um, some boiling water because I actually want to uh, cook them separately from my caldo, just because I wanna see how they taste before I put them into my caldo because if they taste like crap, I'm not gonna eat them. Um, again, we're learning together, so let's get started. Okay guys, to be honest, I'm not digging the texture of the albondigas. Um, it's a little gooey. And I think it's because, I don't know, I, I don't, but let's just stay positive. I think they're gonna be okay. So I'm gonna just grab like this much and then try and make it into a ball. See, this is what I mean, like, it's sticking to my hand, so I don't know if that's a good thing, a bad thing. Je ne sais pas. But, okay, so there's my first, there's my first albondiga. Well, I mean, before we cook it and see if it doesn't tear apart. Okay, so here they are. I'm just waiting for my water to boil so I can throw them in there. Um, they don't look too bad. I am a little afraid that they're going to rip apart when I put them in the water. But again, let's stay positive. Okay guys, moment of truth. This is my boiling water. I'm gonna start throwing one by one. I'm gonna throw the tiny one first, ooh baby. Okay, so now your caldo part. That is the easiest part. I always do this even if I don't put any sort of meat. So you wanna start with your tomato and your onion. So I put around like three tomatoes. This is the other part of the tomato I didn't use for the albondigas. So 
I'm gonna use three, two and a half tomatoes and some onion. It could be white, yellow onion. And then I'm gonna use my two cloves of garlic. Okay, these are how the albondigas are going so far. They are not falling apart, so that's a good thing. Um, but I'm kind of waiting for the rice to look a little bit more cooked, and then I'll, I guess that will determine if it's fully cooked. Okay, you guys, so this is what I mean by a little gushy and mushy. So that's how it should look. So while I was sauteing the tomato, onion and garlic. I was also boiling up some water. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to here. Very carefully because it's hot. I put like this amount of jalapenos to make it spicy. And then I add carrots, potatoes, zucchini. That's what I'm adding to mine. Okay, so now it's boiling. I'm gonna add my vegetables. Okay guys, I did something else. So I took them out of the water where they were boiling and then I added a little bit of oil on the pan and I kind of fried them a little bit. I think I kind of just wanted to do that so that they could stick together a bit more. Look at this one, right? Like, looks nice. It looks like a little nice meatball. So something real quick, I do use um, chicken bouillon or whatever it's called to kind of give some taste to my soba, but because this is a vegan um, plate, I'm not going to add it because it has obviously boil, so it will defeat the whole purpose of you know, making the vegan um, meatballs. So I'm going to just season it up with garlic salt and just a couple of other things. Um, a lot of people also add tomato sauce and I might do that because I think that's going to give it a little bit more saltiness, but I don't know. So I'm going to add some lemon and I added some serrano to mine because I like my caldito to be spicy and maybe I'll regret this later but I'm going to add some tapatillo and then when I was smaller I would always get a tortilla and then roll it up and then I would eat it like this with my caldo so This is what it looks like. Uh -huh, look at that. So here it goes. Mmm, it's good. It legit tastes like the Beyond Burger. If you had the Beyond Burger from, I think, it's, is it Burger King, babe, or which one is it? The Impossible Whopper? Wow. Yeah, the Impossible Whopper. If you've had the Impossible Whopper from Burger King, like, it literally tastes like that. 
but it's not a bad taste it's good mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's yum the only thing i would add more would be salt i feel like it doesn't have enough but other than that it's really good So cheers. All right, guys. So this is the end of the video. I hope you guys could try making them at home. I think it's worth making them if you are trying to be healthier and just stay away from meat. Um, so I'll put down on the description box like all the stuff that I used. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye.